Welcome, welcome, welcome to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm thrilled and honored that you're here and you're joining us all on this journey of being our most brightest, high vibe, most radiant humans. And to do so, it requires strategy, it requires discipline and persevering and resilience. Today we have a returning guest. And the funny thing is we're actually only about 10 minutes away from one another. So we'll have to do another one of these in person. But let me tell you a little bit about today's guest, who's just been a great connection for me behind the scenes um, on many different layers. And it's just exciting for me to share these connections with you too. Martin Pitella, rhymes with Pitella, became a health coach after overcoming serious health challenges. Many great healers have their own hero's journey stories, which you've heard me talk about here on the show. We all go through these hero's journeys and overcoming difficult and often life-altering challenges. Martin's health was dramatically altered for the worse when at age 25, he received 12 mercury amalgam fillings. Determined to reclaim his well-being, Martin embarked on an arduous yet enlightening path of self-discovery. For 10 years, he immersed himself in a wealth of knowledge, reading thousands of pages of literature and reports before the internet in pursuit of holistic healing. Armed with newfound thoughts and fueled by a relentless spirit, he invested over $100,000 into his journey towards restoration. In 2001, Martin traded his career as a management consultant for building a health coach business called Life Enthusiast and a superfood manufacturing business called Axella. Today, Martin's legacy helps people discover how genetics and lifestyle intersect to create either illness or health. His steadfast commitment to healing, deep empathy, love that you have empathy in your bio, by the way, and tireless dedication serve as a beacon of inspiration for those navigating their journey towards vibrant health and vitality. How to eat your metabolic... Okay, we're going to get into some of the questions here because I was just starting to get into them. But my first question for you, Martin, is what is radiance to you? What's that? Somehow I didn't hear. What is radiance to you? To me, radiance. Well, you know, having more energy coming through than what the body needs. You're able to actually not just be a sink for light or sink for consciousness, but actually being able to spread it out, push it out. To me, radiance would be when you come into the room, the light comes on. That's what that means. And what's really fun is, I just sent you a little note there behind the scenes. What's really fun is the fact that we've actually had a chance to meet, which I do have the opportunity to meet a number of founders of different companies and form relationships with them. Uh, however, we first began our encounter online randomly through your team reaching out. It's like, oh my gosh, you're only like, you're a short drive away. Let's let's connect. So yes. I'm, I'm curious, knowing that you know that I study and my mission is to impart radiance and all that entails on others. I'm curious what you thought of me. It's great. Sure enough, uh, my radiant world, somebody starts a noisy truck just outside the window and I have been trying to fiddle with the volume mixer here to get the volume that comes from you high enough that I can hear you over the noise of people outside of me. You know, I have to work on my somehow attracting better vibe into my <laughs> current moment, into my current presence. You know what, let's talk about that for a second. The current vibe, the current moment, because that little sound is actually very relevant to what I think has been going on lately. For those of you who are longtime listeners of the show, last three weeks we've had massive amplifications from the sun. And I actually track this using the Schumann Resonance app. And what I've actually noticed behind the scenes, and Martin and I were talking about this before we started recording, was I've done these check-ins with you know, lots of the people that I've interviewed here on the show, which are you know big time entrepreneurs. They got big missions. They're making great products all in the effort to serve and help people. Now, a lot of us behind the scenes are really going through it. 
and it's a lot of its health stuff. So this is very relevant to what you just said, of more energy coming through than what the body needs. So when the sun decides to give off these X-class solar flares that actually are strong enough to impact our telecommunications, power grids, we are bioenergetic beings. It impacts us too. So what do we do when there's this blast of amplified and sometimes incoherent energy? You guys, this is part of being radiance. This might sound a little left field to you, but the more you know, the more you must learn. <laughs> when it when it comes to this kind of like sharp energy where there's a lot of movement, in the last three weeks, honestly, every single aspect of my life has been changed for the better. What do you do, Martin, to support your resilience? What do you take? What are some of your practices to help remain resilient, to take care of your adaptogens and also your nutritional needs? Okay, should I give you the whole list or just some highlights? Let's let's focus on maybe a couple of actionable steps that right. everyone can start doing today. Well, in my life, I actually use the AO scan, which is a remote access vibrational. So every morning I do a session with the AO scan. I checked check myself in and let it tune me a bit better. So um, I'm always a little better then. And then I do some meditation first thing, then I do some exercise middle of the day, and I take a smoothie usually somewhere around noontime. The smoothie is, we actually make these things ourselves in our own shop. So that's a blend of superfoods that we construct in our shop in in Washington State. And um, it's a blend. It usually starts with a cup of blueberries and has a bunch of interesting things. And you're being, you're being really humble here because I had the opportunity to actually taste test and try and check out your products when I came to visit you and your beautiful wife in your home. And, you know, you're making some really high level products and mm. knowing a little bit more about you and just how tuned you are, in tune you are with different things and manufacturing processes and quality of ingredients. I really want you all to check out Martin's products over at life-enthusiast.com. That's going to be in the show notes. Because as people like Martin who are tuned in, like today we're both like, what is going on with the energy? So like we're in it. We're just being real raw, authentic here. This is what y'all are in for. This is a sign of your life. We need to have things to support us as we go through these things. Like what you said, when the energy is like a lot, there's a lot of movements. It's how you deal with it. But we also have to have the discipline to regularly give our body some of the things that it needs. So you have a, a number of formulations. I'd love for you to kind of list what those formulations right. are. Let's yeah, see. that's actually worth investigating. So we make foundationals and we make specialized that are specific to certain functions. So the foundational is something that you want to take every day to fill the gaps that, I mean, these days, the industrial society diet is very gappy in the sense that the soils are depleted, there's not, a, you know, not enough mineralization, there's not enough enzyme, there's not enough phenols, polyphenols, terpenes, all of that business. There, there's a lot of language that we can go sciency and make it sounds like we're really fancy. Well, we are fancy in the following way. We use God's creations to catch the gaps as in everything that we put together is in fact plant, plant life, God made, not pharmaceutical, not artificial. It's just grown somewhere. And we focus on using plants that live in a stressed environment, either high altitude or far north. Well, there's not much far south just because it's far for us to import, but plants that live in difficult terrains. And what happens there is that they, in their struggle to survive, actually have to put the best of themselves into the, their bodies. Like life force. Like life force, yes. They have to work hard to survive. 
And so those plants are phenomenal. And you, I'm sure you know about some, like maca is in 5,000 feet altitude, and it helps with the immune system. But things like uh, pollen from northern plants, right? It's, it's called Swedish pollen. And it's, it's just wildflowers that are collected, and the pollens are, you know, seeds, seeds and pollens are the material that sends out the energy for reproduction. It puts the best of itself out there. So when we mix these things or collect these things, we nourish the body as best as it can be nourished. So anyway, the foundational will have all the bits and pieces in it that you want to put in your body to be feeding your systems. And that's the, that's the immunity and energy, meta, metabolic stuff, and your brain being able to think clearly and, and physiology, just, just holding it together. Right? So that's what that will be. And we make four different ones. Some are for people who need to be calmed down a bit because they are already wired. Others are the other way around for people who are kind of slow and sluggish who need a bit of a lift. We have that too. So it depends what you need. Yeah, and you have a women's formula too, which is actually really beautiful because beautiful because on the package you have this lotus flower. And I was actually also really happy to see the solubility of your product. I have a background in Gen Chem Organic Chem and Biochem. So whenever I investigate a product, I'm looking at how well it mixes, how well it tastes, or how well it doesn't taste, right? Like you don't add anything in there to make it taste yeah. fruity and fluffy. Like this is just mm. like the straight goods. Um, yeah, that's the interesting know. bit worth saying, which is that we do not use uh, things that are sweeteners. It's all just natural business. And we actually use natural plant oils to put it together to give it a flavor profile that's pleasant without hiding the true nature of the thing. So it's it's sort of like not a lot of makeup, you know? It's just clean, washed, healthy. And you see it when a person enters into a room who's totally made up with this much of foundation to hide everything, you know that there's just not a whole lot of life there. And so we're, we're like that. We're, we're making it natural and strong. And um, oh, what would I say about yeah, it? Yeah, Martin's being really humble here, everybody. Um, the, the type of different processes that he uses, the types of people to formulate all these things are really high level. Because for those of you who have been tuning into the show here, you know that I've been on a quest to make my own products for the last two years. However, these massive labs, they just, they can't do things to the quality and the nuanced aspects and levels that, um, you know, you're doing with, with your team too. So there's, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that comes into making a product to support you. And you talked about something really interesting, how some of your products, they help people depending on if they need more energy, if they need to be more relaxed. And one of the things here that's really key to mention that I, I'm going to kind of drip into those of you tuning in is our hormones impact our behaviors. Hormones impact the behaviors of others. So say, for example, you are going through life and you're really stressed out, you're fast paced, go, go, go. Your adrenaline and your cortisol are going to be amplified. Now, there's things that we can do to counteract that, even with our thoughts and consciousness and attention on those counterbalancing hormones, like, for example, oxytocin. And, but there's other things we need to give our body these precursors to make these balancing hormones. So when, you know, I've been having a little bit more family engagement here this time of year, we tend to have a lot of family encounters. And I was, it was to the effect of sitting next to a family member that I identified had been running really high on adrenaline and cortisol. And my heart, actually, my heart rate increased. And it was the most interesting things. Yes, I'm very sensitive to my surroundings. Those of you listen know that. Those of you in the membership know that. I don't really talk about this stuff too publicly, 
But the people you're around, if their hormones are off, it's going to impact you. So I'm a huge fan of doing this resilience stuff, doing this biohacking stuff to not only impact yourself, but those who you engage with regularly in your family. And would you say that, like, say, for example, you and your wife and other people that you know that have as a couple the shared values with health, do you find that they have, I think, the best chance at resilience and overcoming life stuff? Hmm. <laughs> Such a loaded question. Yeah. We affect one another strongly, mm -hmm. right? Like when you enter into a, a bonded relationship, when you're together every day, you will affect one another strongly, right? Like you're exchanging body fluids, you're exchanging, connecting your auras, you're, you're together in, like it becomes intertwined. So, be, be careful with whom you mingle because it will affect you. And um, so, so, yes, there are, of course, we, we make these uh, tinctures, for example, that help us raise the oxy, oxytocin. Like we have this product called Meridium. You take that, be careful who you take it in the presence of because you're going to bond, right? <laughs> It's, it's super funny. calming. It's, it's funny it's when just... you think about that. Like hormones really are running the show. Oh yeah. They really are like all, every single one of our interactions. And because I like to learn about the psychological component of reading people so that I'm safe, I'm protected. And then I make the highest connections possible. You still got to have that exchange with people around you that are different because it's actually going to lead to a more well-balanced psyche and it's actually good for your brain. So it's not just about like putting yourself in a corner and only engaging with people who are like fellow biohackers who are into the stuff I talk about on the show, because you're going to engage with people that don't. And so it's kind of like this invisible, invisible ocean rather of the toxins in our environment, air, water, lighting, right. electromagnetics, the food, but it's also people and their hormones that they're giving off. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, you know, go ahead. The, the talk has been about uh, oh, whether the theory of virus, as in germ theory, is valid or whether the exosome is, in fact, the thing that we call virus because you cannot tell one from the other, right? And an exosome is something that your body puts out. Your cells exude, eject, and send away an exosome. So when I'm sitting here breathing, exhaling, I'm sending samples of myself into the room. Well, you're doing the same. So when we're close, we're actually exchanging with one another what's going on inside of us. And both of our immune systems will have to deal with it. So we've had a wonderful example of it not that long ago, three, four years now, where this whole thing just exploded terribly because somehow we got imported a whole lot of pretty hostile bits. And then they started exchanging and people started having all kinds of really awful reactions to it. But there's also the psychological component to these things oh, as yeah. well. Like you have to maintain the foundations of you to be resilient body, mind, spirit, energy, the radiance piece comes from having the foundations dialed in first. You're not going to be mm -hmm. like this beautiful, radiant human change in the world. If behind the scenes, your hormones are off, your toxic buckets full, you got yeah. terrible relationships, your life is a mess. So like, but yet, the <laughs> foundations are taking foundational products. You just reminded me of pheromones. Pheromones are the signals that our hormonal state sends out, right? So, and of course, the sense of smell in, injected from the nose hits your olfactory nerve right in your brain, no barrier. There's no, there's no frontal cortex to uh, give you a pause. When you inhale a, a pheromone or any smell really, it's causing you to react to it without the benefit of having, uh, well, the frontal cortex. You don't get to think about it. It goes straight into the emotional body. 
So, <laughs> what do you surround yourself with? Do you uh, put Glade plugins and perfumed candles in your home? Think about that before you do it again. Oh, gosh. Yeah. If I've stayed at some Airbnbs, I unplug those things immediately. It's so key. Like what you put on your skin, what you put in your body, what you clean your home with, your dishes, your laundry. Um, right. The only candles I'll use are beeswax. And then having your air purifiers going on. I'm really happy that you mentioned the sense of smell because you can tell a lot about somebody's health by their smell. And if I'm having an exchange with someone and they have bad breath, it tells me a lot of things. It tells me that yep. their oral and gut microbiome is probably mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The gut brain access, there's going to be some psychological stuff. Yeah. Or on the flip side to that, it could just be like a vibe and this just extra sense kind of given me a bit of a red flag that I might not want to engage in this person professionally or personally because there's something a little bit off with them. And it's important that in mm -hmm. those closer relationships, we're having right. really like the highest connections possible. Yeah. But I want you to notice this all for those of you tuning in, what people smell like. And if they're using a lot of heavily fragranced products uh, you know, their hormones are probably going to be off too. They're right. going to get exposure to phthalates and fragrances, which is again, hormone disrupting. What, how do you use smell? Well, when two you're things, connected? two things I would like to throw to the, uh, on that file, which is you may have read about this. Dogs can detect cancer in people and dogs communicate primarily through smell. So, there is a smell to that. So the decaying tissue, the fermentation is giving off signals. So that's one, just as a thought, right? And, and another concept that, that hit me was we actually have supplements that help with the inner terrain. For example, this amazing O, which stands for oxygen, um, is something that you can take orally, swish it about, and it's highly active at um, taking apart microbes that are undesirable. You know, there are the two main groups, gram-negative and gram-positive, and the gram-negative tend to build illness, and the gram-positive tend to be less resilient but more life-supporting. Anyway, so we need to find some way to kill off the resilient bunch. And Amazing O has this wonderful talent of raising ORP, oxidation reduction potential. It pushes it to the point where these microbes can no longer maintain their integrity. It just goes away. So specifically, you can just swish with this amazing O in your mouth and um, clear all of that. It will, if you swallow it, it'll clear... Um, What's that thing called? H. pylori, which is a fairly common infection that gives people bad breath, right? Like when you have this sour stomach that just keeps coming through all the way up, that's usually a bacterial infection, which we can kill with this supplement. Mm -hmm. And even the breath thing, like we can exchange, um, through my understanding of parasitology and, and hearing, uh, presentations on parasitologists, which parasites affect 80% of you. I had wow. every parasite in the book when I started to do a cleanse, like, oh my goodness, these things have been in my body. How long have they been in my body? And now I want to get them all out. Like this is a journey, but you got to have those foundations first and then start to add on those other things. So mm. for those of you tuning in, just think for a moment, some of the ads that you've seen lately for this, that, and the other thing, the bright, shiny ads, and it says it's going to do this, that, and the other thing. Honestly, the best products that I've found are made by um, individuals that are kind of like you, Martin, more mature, and there's more of an, and this is the same thing in skincare. This is historically what I've seen over and over and over again, the best products. There's much more of an emphasis on research and development than there is in media 
and marketing. Now, there can still be great products out there that have, you know, younger CEOs and polished speakers creating great content out there. It's just an observation. That, mm. Well, that I'd, I yeah, I'd like to say to that, life enthusiast, my own life, the company that I'm running, we focus on products that are still made by people who created them. When you find inventors, people who have passion for results, they make things differently compared to when this company becomes too large and gets sold or the person just decides that they've had enough of it and move on. Meaning this, like as an example, Garden of Life started back when with Jordan, what's his last name? I can't think of it. Anyway, it was an awesome company with awesome products. And then he grew the company to a certain size. And then they sold, changed hands. A publicly traded entity now owns it. And it's the guys with spreadsheets that are telling the management what to do. And that leads to cost controls. How far can we push it down? How far can we co squeeze costs out of it to make it more profitable? And that leads to just inferior product. That's all I can say. So yeah, what, you're, what you're saying, you're talking about how you see slick does not necessarily translate into valuable, right? It's easy to spend money on advertising. It's easy to hire very, very polished spokespersons. But is the substance still there? Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's one of the angles here on the show is to help you all become a more conscious consumer. So I'm in the perspective or rather the position where I get to meet people that make the products mm -hmm. behind the companies, the CEOs, the founders. And it's so cool because you mentioned soil quality and Autumn from Paleo Valley, she just wrote her dissertation on soil quality. So of course she cares where those cows are feeding from and eating the grass for her meat sticks and protein bars. No, this isn't um, sponsored by her at all, but it's just an example. And I, I know that you're doing some cool things behind the scenes and have actually been sharing your work with some of my colleagues as well. This is how this world works. There's like this group of us, like Martin and myself and other great people I've had here on the show that we really truly just want to make the best products because they know that they, we know that they work really well for us. And there's just oh, so much heart, but also sophisticated technology behind it. It's not just pretty packaging, like my skincare line, it's not going to have pretty packaging. It's not going to have fancy looking boxes because it's going to be all about just the quality of the product and uh, doing some cool things behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> so you just reminded me that I should probably finish the sentence I started earlier about the products, right? So we have the foundationals, which start your day. And then depending on what's going on in the body, we have additional, we have something that supports the kidneys or the pancreas or the liver, or the digestion elimination, or the cardiovascular, or the apoptosis system, which has to do with turning off abnormal cells and promoting healthy ones. So whichever you might need, we have that, right? And so I actually rotate through it. Like I take one of these things once a year anyway. Like I'll do a liver tune-up once a year and I'll do a gut tune up and I'll do a uh, sweep for any abnormal cells once a year. So that's, that would be the basis of the smoothie, right? It'll have the foundational and then I throw something else on top to just kick the organs that need help. And what's neat about this stuff is you kind of hear Martin sharing a little bit behind the scenes, like, okay, I feel like I need to do this. Okay, I feel like I need to do this. This is actually what it's all about. It's not about just like doing something that's trendy. It's about you having your foundation set up in such a way through discipline and the right strategy to keep your toxic load as empty as possible so that when you notice shifts in your body, like I had a massive rash on my neck from forest fire smoke, from renovation exposure, from kitty litter exposure, and just like enormous um, amounts of stress and shift, which is all been good, by the way. I mentioned that before. 
but the skin shows you, the mouth shows you, your gums, your energy shows you, the quality of your bowel movements. Are they regular? Have they shifted? So it's learning to know what the, I think the issue is, is so many people don't know how good they can actually feel. And when they're used to that as their kind of like baseline and then something happens, it's like, oh, now I know what to do. I, I have this product on hand and I'm going to do this and I'm going to support this. How empowering is that? Yep, truly. Right. <laughs> um, well, and so we have the library, right? So we are able to, first of all, talk to people about what's going on in their health, in their body. We do the metabolic typing process where we actually get to understand how genetics and current epigenetics are expressing and then understand what the drivers are and, and fix it. Detox, so important. You just mentioned it. It's I, key. Yeah, I'm in my sauna almost every night, <laughs> especially right now because I had some skin yeah. issues pop yeah, up. Yeah, but look at you. You're pretty glowy right now, right? I am now. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I can maintain the glow. And yes, even if there's like a wavering and I see it in the skin stuff, like an extra breakout, uh, like I literally had eczema on my whole clavicular neck area. It was yeah. intense. And then uh, some of the products behind the scenes that are in development, um, using some of the technologies that you use, mm -hmm. some of your products too, thank you. Uh, I was actually able to clear it. And so sometimes when you go through stuff, you, you got to ramp up your self-care. Any mm. good counselor or therapist is going to say, when you're going through things, you ramp up your self-care. You don't go to drugs. You don't go to alcohol. You don't go to escapism. Really important. And it's about resting and recharging and rejuvenating. So, you, I mean, that's been part of your journey, too. It's like knowing when yeah. to slow down, optimize that self-care. And then knowing when you can, you know, continue to show up and push again. And I'll be totally honest with you, Martin and I, before we got on the call, we're like, what's going on? Mm. There's things happening. We're both picking up on it. So you've probably been able to kind of like sense our shift as we've sort of recalibrated and rebalanced mm. and then kind of grounded oh, yeah. a little bit here now, which is great. It takes a bit of grounding. Yep. All the time and intentional. It's like all these different things. The more you know, the more there is to learn so that you can continue to master these different processes. Um, yeah, there's a wonderful metaphor for it. As you're climbing a mountain, your horizons get wider and wider and wider. Mm -hmm. And so the higher you are, the more effort it took to get there, but the greater the perspective. But I find the foundations really never change. Like the foundations of skincare, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub. The foundations of healing your body with the necessary antioxidants, cofactors, uh, different vitamins as the cofactors right, right. are, and different things yeah. to support different areas of the body ongoing so that when you need it, you got it. And, right. I get a lot and, of yet, and yet there are the basics, right? The mm -hmm. very, very basics, like, for example, the currency of chemical exchange, which is the oxidation reduction, is the electron. And the most efficient transporter of electrons is carbon 60. Go figure. Right. And so when I you literally discover... put carbon 60 in my hair today, by the way, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and on my scalp. <laughs> but you know, when you discover that little detail that okay, carbon 60 is a super efficient transporter, which is great. But the point two is you actually need to bring the electrons in. Because a super efficient truck is still just an empty truck. You need to put something in it. And the desired stuff are the electrons and grounding, as in bare feet on the ground or go hugging trees or walk on the beach. And get your hands in the dirt and also eat foods that have grown in, in the soil that have not been cooked yet. So that means fresh juices. I don't know. You can juice a carrot or you can just eat a salad. Mm -hmm. Things that are still raw will have much greater donation of these electrons. And enzymes. are going to serve you as, as, as the source of life. 
Yeah. When we connected, you shared something really cool, actually, that herbs, because they're so resilient, they last through every single season, mm. that they have more of this higher life force quality. And I never thought about that. I thought about herbs having you know, so many different enzymes that are helpful for us. Using mm. fresh herbs straight from the garden is way better than like dried herbs that you get at the, the supermarket. Grow it yourself. It's dirt cheap. Right. But the life force component, little squirrel by my window, that's a little squirrel, um, <laughs> is, is the life force component with what we're consuming is so key. And that's why when you're considering using different products, it's, I think it's really cool to know that some companies really actually have an awareness of this because I would say that most don't. I've never interviewed anybody that has a a supplement line makes products that takes that into consideration. It's taken into consideration more on like the adaptogenic level. That's kind of the framework, but your framework is a little bit different. So Mm. I find uh, what you're doing quite interesting. So there are four main causes of disease and let's reframe this to aging in general because you're here to learn how to slow aging and be, you know, beautiful and feel fantastic. Well, and yeah. sound well like- the aging is the consequence of the the errors, right? Mm-hmm. Aging is really errors creeping in. I mean, look at it. See, these are errors in reproduction, right? The cells used to be just like yours, and now they're a little uh, like that. And what's that all about? Well, the skin isn't as flexible. The collagen structures are not holding together. Well, you know, eventually I'll have to die too. I have to make room for the next generation. It's the only inevitable in life is death. Isn't that ironic? Right. Death. <laughs> so, but what I'm trying to say here is that it's it's a tug of war. It's a push and pull between the forces of renewal and the forces of entropy, where you are essentially losing the original blueprint. And so you're reproducing. Well, just to give an example, you cut yourself on the face and for the next while, your body's going to be reproducing the cells with a scar down here, right? Why does it not go straight back to the original blueprint? It could undo it. Anyway. Well, I think that's a perfect tie-in because I have uh, some behind-the-scenes notes here. Uh, The four main causes of disease, a.k.a. aging, stagnation, malnutrition, toxicity, and trauma. So you just mentioned a cut on the face as being a trauma. Now, this takes on different forms. It can be like a physical trauma, Mm -hmm. but it can also be more of like an emotional type of trauma, which we all experience as we move through life. But it's what we choose to do with it. So if something happens, you want to fuel your body. You want to heal from it. You want to recover from it. And then Mm -hmm. after that, the hero's journey, like you mentioned, you're going to be reaping the reward of more knowledge and know-how. So the next time an obstacle comes along, it's not going to be a trauma because you have the strategies and tools to address it head on, which builds confidence. Absolutely, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not what happens. It's how you cope with it. It's what you do in reaction to it. And and rather than react, it would be better if we could respond, which means that there's this gap between the input and what we do in, res, in response to it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the trauma, well, trauma's stored in the, in the water, right? The water is actually the memory. So soft tissues, all of them, whether it's your uh, belly or your muscle, your whatever, I mean, You may have the experience of going to a massage and uh, somebody working on you and all of a sudden a flood of some sort of sensation comes through you, over you, that you cannot connect to anything that's going on right now. I mean, I remember just lying there, tears running down my face, not knowing what's being released, but something's being released. Anyway, trauma stored in the soft tissues of the body in the form of emotional memories that should be released because if they remain unreleased, we're bound to be affected by them, blocked from full expression. 
in the membership, I cover some of the strategies that I use and I actually shared one of them with you before we started to record because this stuff is, you know, it's getting more into the space of energy, spirituality, some of the more esoteric components of us. But hey, we're body, mind, spirit, energy beings. If you think that that stuff's woo, you just simply either maybe don't need it or it's not in your path or you just haven't learned about it yet. And when you mentioned releasing trauma or events and things like that. The way I like to look at it is just kind of just let it flow, let it flow out and really take the time to process things in a healthy way. Um, and I am sharing these types of insights just because I'm seeing and hearing and being reached out to by a lot of people who are having a particularly challenging time recently and when we're going through times you might be more vulnerable and you might be more susceptible to even more trauma so the better you look after yourself the better your defenses are in every regard it's just going to help you cruise through life with a little bit more grace and ease and not have those fine lines and wrinkles because you're stressed out all day long again hormones high in adrenaline high in cortisol mm -hmm. it's not going to show up on your face so people won't even be able to tell you're going through the ringer because you look fantastic. <laughs> yeah. You're hack it. Yeah. 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 I saw a guy on television proudly declare his age, which he said, I'm 72. And he looked like my father by comparison, right? Like he looked 20 years older than me. And I looked at that and said, hold on. How is this guy so, I don't know what you'd call it, worn out or just, uh, anyway, it, it was a shock for me to see someone so far on the used up, worn off path. So yes, there definitely is a difference. And it's what you put in your body. And that would be detox. You mentioned it. Nourish. You must get the right nutrition and you must avoid stagnation because stagnation will cause, well, the best example of that is a swamp. So when you're not creating movement, you're going to start rotting on the inside. Petrification, not a good, not a good place to well, be. I don't want to be a swamp. <laughs> I want to be a beautiful babbling brook waterfall. It's vibrant. We want freshness. <laughs> we want freshness, effervescence, and movement. Totally. Keep dancing. So it's kind of like every single opening to our body, we got to take care of because this is where things can enter. And also in the skin, because most of the body's heavy metals is through the air, mold, all that stuff for us oh, on yeah. the skin. So when you got good stuff on your skin, which is your first defense and then also internally you're keeping your defenses up with your support for your foundations i mean you're really going to be setting yourself up for success and when i see people that come to me for rejuvenation a lot of times it's during perimenopause and difficult times in their life because they're looking in the mirror and they're thinking oh my gosh what's happened to me i feel fantastic but i don't feel like the outsides match and i just want to encourage everybody who's you know, doing re rejuvenation because I love to give uh, support on that too. You know, what to do, where to go, what some of the best research back options are. But you really want to do the inner landscape and inner terrain stuff as well. And I would actually say it's even more important than just showing up to a practitioner to take care of lines between the brows or laser for reds and browns <laughs> because you're going to get more longevity even with your yeah, results. Sure. So key. Yeah, you want to be able to have, it's the microbial terrain. It's the microbiome inside you that's going to dictate the experience very strongly. And then also what lives on you too. Yeah, yeah. And that brain connection is so key. The, the brain skin connection. So you mentioned gut, I mentioned skin, but the skin brain, actually the skin comes from the same cell line as the brain. So there's a massive connection. If you got lots of interesting things growing on your skin, I had a neurologist here on the show. He said, oh, actually plaques on the skin, like seborrheic keratosis. 
um, can actually have a correlation with brain lesions, which is really interesting here. So, you know, Martin and I here, we could go on forever. I know Martin's a busy man, so I should probably let you go. Do you have any closing words for us here today? Closing words. Consequences of your action. My daughter put her little tattoo on herself right here. C-O-Y-A. Consequences of your actions. It's an awesome reminder. Remember that there is always the basics that you must take care of. You cannot fix with pills what you screw up with your forks. So remember the food you eat, the water you drink, the environment you're in, the people you connect with or spend time with, the shows you watch and put into your brain, all that sort of stuff makes a big difference in your life. So, yeah, you're talking about radiance. It, uh, everything you put in will come out. So what do you want to radiate out to the universe? Watch your inputs. Yeah, think about your inputs. Mm -hmm. That is the wisdom for me for the day. Not just food, what you're watching, what you're listening to. Those are super key too. So I love that. Thanks so much for sharing that. The consequences of actions. I'll just add a little final piece here. But also the consequences of inaction. I would say that that's equally important because when you don't take action, you're going to miss out on opportunities. You're not going to be professionally and personally developing yourself. You're not going to, you know, so many people who are really successful, they fail, but they keep at it. They show perseverance. And then guess what? At the end of the hero's journey, they got the good stuff. When you're doing this work, you're going to get more of the radiance. Perfectionism doesn't exist. We're all just doing the best we can. Martin and I here today are like prime examples of, you know, we're just keeping on track with our focus and what we're here to do and support everybody the best we can. So thank you everyone for joining us here on this a little bit more kind of like raw and real um, session here on the School of Radiance podcast. Be sure to head on over to Martin's products, life-enthusiast.com. Uh, I've had the opportunity to use a number of his products. Um, I, I like them. And you can get them in the show notes of this episode as well. For those of you who are really desiring to, you know, not have that state of inaction and you're ready to do something, because sometimes actually inaction ends up being more expensive and more time consuming to correct down the line. So you're worth it. Today's the day. Book your one on one. Join my tutorials join the membership. I'm here to be of service. This is deep stuff, especially in the membership. So some of you are on the fence. You got to join this because I share some interesting things to, to really just support you that go way beyond just the skincare you're using. And stay tuned for my upcoming skincare line with some pretty cool technology behind the scenes. And just big shout out to Martin for helping make that all possible. We're all here to support one another and just help people be healthier, have better relationships and succeed in life and both look and feel fantastic. Thanks everyone for joining us right here on the School of Radiance podcast. Have a beautiful high vibe rest of your day and we'll see you again very soon.